You ever find yourself wondering how you're going to make it through a situation that seems to be impossible or even more than that, it is impossible. And, and it's something that you have to make it through. You ever get to that place and you're just thinking, how am I going to get through this? How am I gonna survive this? Well, listen, there's good news because the scripture basically says, it talks about a situation that Abraham went through that was just like this. And it explains exactly how he went through it, okay? And it might surprise you. It shouldn't surprise you, but it might. Listen to this, because this is what it it's, talks about this in Romans chapter 4. And it says that uh, in 419, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body to be already dead. You know, sometimes I feel like that too. But <laughs> honestly, Abraham was you know, uh, really old. He was pretty close to 100 years old. And, or maybe he was 100 years old. It just says here he was about 100 years old. His wife, Sarah, was 90 years old. And God said that they're going to have a baby. He ignored the reality, okay? The physical limitations of the world, because God said, this is what's going to happen. And he chose, rather than to focus on those physical impossibilities and uh, just the reality of them, instead of that, he chose to trust God, to live by faith. Verse 20, he did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Basically, what it's saying here is he didn't change his mind at some point. Like, oh, man, I'm being foolish or whatever. He knew God had given him a promise and he just stuck with it. He just stuck with it. I'm going to believe that. I'm not going to believe my own doubts. I'm not going to, you know, get, give in to everything else because God told me I'm going to believe it. Verse 21, he was fully convinced that what God had promised he was able to do. Okay, I think this is where um, we often get into two issues. It's not the, the issue of whether or not God could do it. The, the issue with us so often is whether or not God will do it or God wants to do it because we're still trying to figure out God's will in our life, right? We're still, um, you know, sorting out, should I do this? Should I do that? You know, all of that craziness that, that everybody goes through. There's not many people that really know this is the exact thing that I should be doing right now. And I mean, honestly, this whole topic of God's will, it, it's a big, that's a big topic. But the truth is, if we stick to the, the scripture, we do actually know a lot of what we should be doing. We might not know the specifics about uh, details, but we know how we should be doing our life right now because the scripture says in a lot of places, you know, what God's will is. It's his will that we abstain from sexual immorality, for example. We know that. Okay, but... He did not waver in unbelief. He just put his faith in the Lord. Okay. This is a hundred year old man that was told that he was going to have a child by a 90 year old woman. He did not waver. And it says this. It was credited to him for righteousness. Because he believed. God saw that as a righteous act. God looked at it and said, that's a righteous man. That's somebody that is trusting me. Now, if you find yourself in, the, in that impossible situation, right? You find yourself in a place like Abraham where you, you say, hey, uh, I don't know how this is going to work out. It doesn't make any sense. Well, listen, that didn't make sense either. He trusted God. He put his faith in God. He believed the promise of God. God made a promise to him and he believed it. And then 
he didn't waver. You say, well, okay, Dale, you don't know how difficult the thing is that I'm going through. You don't understand how hard of a thing that you're talking about. You're just on YouTube talking, right? I, I completely agree with you. I don't know that, okay? And I can't know that, honestly, but God knows it. He certainly understands it and he sees it. And listen, I, I just want to encourage you in this thing because when you get caught up in those conversations and you start saying, well, you can't understand what I'm going through. Okay, that's that may be true, but that doesn't change God's promise. You see, all of that is a distraction from what God has actually laid before you. Yeah, but Dale, what, how do I know he's going to actually answer that promise? Well, because he is who he said he is. This is often like the step out of the boat moment, you know? It's time to walk by faith. And I'm just saying this because not only is it something that we need to be reminded of, that, that, that God is faithful. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think according to Rome, or Ephesians, right? Not only that, but it seems like right now, in the a lot of the people around me that are really getting hit hard by uh, the attacks of the enemy, this thing is one of the things that the enemy is attacking. He's basically telling people, hey, God's not going to come through for you. Give up. And I'm just here to remind you that this is going to, it, it's going to happen like that. The enemy is going to tell lies. We have to embrace the truth. Okay? Don't let the enemy distract you with all sorts of things that have nothing to do with God or his truth. Okay? Because those things will get you nowhere. They lead to, I mean, they they, they might get you earthly things, but they don't lead you to the place of hope and peace uh, that we have in the scripture. So... This is your reminder, okay? Put your faith and your trust in the Lord. Don't give up, okay? Don't waver in these things. Find those promises and believe them. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, please leave me a comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you.